on Newstalk.com, on Smart Speaker, and on the Newstalk app. This, this is Newstalk. It's seven o'clock. Good evening. I'm Ben Finnegan. Students who try to influence their calculated Leaving Cert grade will be reported to the Department of Education. New guidance says any sort of pressure or gifts could undermine the new system. Cabinet has also decided to indemnify teachers against any legal action relating to the marks they give. Education Minister is Joe McHugh. We do have mechanisms within the guidelines now which will allow for persistent contact be either directly from students or on behalf of students, there will be a reporting mechanism uh, within the guidelines. Twelve more people with COVID-19 have died in the Republic, with the death toll now at 1,583. 76 new cases have been reported, bringing the total to 24,391. The head of the COVID-19 Modelling Advisory Group believes the number infected by COVID-19 in Ireland could have been as low as 1%. Professor Philip Nolan says it shows there's no immunity. Fewer than 5% of the population and probably as low as 1% of the population, seroprevalence studies will show. So at right now, we estimate that a very low proportion of the population has been exposed to this virus. That means there is no immunity out there. The government has been criticised for allowing McDonald's to reopen while people still can't get access to cancer screening. Clare TD Michael McNamara raised concerns in the Dáil, saying priorities aren't in the right place. However, Health Minister Simon Harris says they're working to bring back all non-COVID health services. I've yet to find another country where they've turned back on their screening programme. I want to turn it back on, but I want to do it in a safe way. We'll be led by clinical advice and within two weeks we'll have the non-COVID care plan, which will determine when it is safe. The Taoiseach says the government is looking to address the education requirements of children with special needs during the summer. July provision, a form of summer education, is being considered for those with the highest needs. Speaking to News Talk, Leo Varadkar says he's worried about the impact staying at home for such a long period has on them. Some of them may actually be regressing in terms of their development. I'm really worried about that group of children and I'm getting a lot of letters from their parents as well. That's it for now. More in an hour. News Talk Weather. Thanks to the AA. For great value home insurance, go online to the AA.ie. Wet and windy tonight. Winds will be strongest on Atlantic coasts. Overnight lows of 9 to 11 degrees. And now you're up to date on News Talk. Off the ball. This, this is News Talk. All right, you're very welcome along. It's Thursday evening. Nathan with you till 10 o'clock here on Off the Ball. We've got a busy show ahead. Yet again, John Giles is picking one of his all time 11s. These have been sparking plenty of debate over the last couple of months and very much getting us through lockdown. Last week was quite simply sensational as he picked the best rest of the world 11 he had played against. Tonight, he's picking the all time England 11, uh, going all the way back to 1960. So there should be some World Cup winners in there right up to the modern day uh, so that's coming up at about quarter past seven no shortage of good quality attacking options it turns out uh, for England down through the years we have John Muldoon with us after eight o'clock a coach now with Bristol over in the Gallagher Premiership in England we'll be talking about the potential resumption of that and also we'll be relieving me some of the glory days that he enjoyed with Connacht down through the years on the football show then from nine o'clock Tom English will talk to us about Celtic uh, being crowned Scottish Premiership champions for the ninth year in a row. And we'll also talk to Shea Given, who was back at work with Derby County today, being tested for COVID-19 uh, with the championship, it seems, due to start probably around the same time as the Premier League returns. And we'll also talk to Shea uh, about being selected on Donegal's Mount Rushmore, which, of course, is the most important thing that we will talk about uh, this evening. Richie McCormick is with me as well. How are you, Richie? Even Nathan. Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Was John uh, picking his all-time England eleven anything to do with the fact that on this very day, in 1990, the greatest football single of all time, World in Motion, was released? You know, I think that came into his reckoning, but I don't know if it was the final, final okay. factor in his decision. But I'd be sure to bring it up. I, I think you should. I think you should. I'd, I'm, I'd, I'd be wondering if John could pull off the John Barnes rap I was, I was thinking the exact same thing. I, I think the world needs to hear what... Whether or not John Barnes could be an can awkward be silence for a Giles. few minutes, but sure, here, listen, why not? Are you keeping well? I, I, I've heard John Giles' MC skills are pretty much on point. I'm all right, yeah, yeah, I'm all right. Good, good to hear, good to hear. You? Um, I'm hanging in there. We've got a good show ahead. Um, be interested to see who pick, 
who he picks as his front three for England. That's a tough one, isn't it? Because like, like, are you counting Bobby Charlton as a forward? Or are you counting him as no, a midfielder? Counting, Bobby Charlton's a midfielder. Like Bobby Charlton's a midfielder. Right. Have you been listening to it all over the last couple of months? Bobby Charlton's last, a midfielder. He can play everywhere though. The last, 50, the last fifteen years, pretty much. You know, um, Bobby Charlton's a midfielder. Yeah. Um, then your front three, you definitely have to have Lineker then. Lineker, Shearer, Owen, Rooney. Rooney. He's the all-time top scorer. Jimmy Greaves, Jeff Hurst. Oh my good God! See the thing about it is. When you look back on that 66 team, I'm not underplaying anybody in it, but aside from Bobby Charlton and Bobby Moore and maybe uh, Gordon Banks, the rest of the team is very much like a team unit won them the World Cup rather than superstars. one or two or three individuals that are superstars at the time. Yeah, de- definitely. Like, And Hurst falls into that bracket for outside of his uh, World Cup final salvo of a hat-trick. Like he's, he, he was a pretty good uh, striker for West Ham, but I don't think he was lighting the world aflame uh, well, he, for the rest he, he of the He wasn't time. Roger Hunter, he wasn't Jimmy Greaves, but he ended up exactly, in the right yeah. place at the right time. And that's, I guess, the uh, the, the best thing about being a World Cup winner is you'll always have that uh, to his name. But yeah, but geez, John's got a hell of a job on his hands. Uh, picking centre-halves as well. Like, are, we, are we going to have a count on how many teams Jack Charlton will have worked his way into from John over the past mm, few weeks? That is a good question. Um, I'm not going to give anything away. Though Fair I will enough. say there's three centre halves. A back three from John. A back three. A back three. I had a bit of influence on this. This is my proudest moment when uh, we, <laughs> he was initially going with a back four and I suggested he change it. Presumably, obviously, he would never listen to anything I suggest. Yeah. Got a call a few hours ago and you know, said that wasn't a bad idea you had. I've just been buzzing ever since. It's as I good as it think, gets. I, I don't think any of us have ever changed John's mind on anything. I like, you try and put a point it. to him. And usually it's like, no, no, no. But wow, fair play. That's, 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 that can go on the, the LinkedIn page. Thing. It, it, it's up there right now. 3-4-3 uh, three, three formation coming up in about 10 minutes from John Giles. Uh, did you know that Aviva Ireland's largest insurer is marking the 10-year anniversary of the official opening of the Aviva Stadium and its proud long-term sponsorship of the iconic venue? And to celebrate this milestone, Aviva are paying tribute to some of the most iconic sporting moments of the past decade. Feel free to join in. You can follow Aviva Ireland on Instagram and Twitter and share your favourite Aviva Stadium memories using hashtag Hashtag safe to dream. We've been having public votes this week to crown the most iconic footballing moment at the Aviva from the last decade. We've won finalists already in the shape of Kieran Kelly's goalkeeping heroics for Sligo Rovers in 2010. Beat off competition from Shane Long yesterday. And all day today, we've been running the vote for the second semi final. It's John Walters' goals against Bosnia that got us to Euro 2016 against Shawnee Maguire's late winner in the 2016 FAI Cup final. It would appear that the League of Ireland Mafia have well and truly hijacked the process. No, but not, that, no. that is democracy. No. The votes no. have been counted and verified, and the winner is, by a margin of 65% to 35%. I've already given away the answer. It's Shawnee Maguire. Yes. So, See, proper ten, order. 10 years of the Aviva Stadium, and it's two League of Ireland moments that stand out the most. So it's going to be Kieran how, Kelly. How can you deny how can you deny a last minute and extra time cup final winner? Again, to seal the against to seal your the great rivals against your greatest rivals. That's just dreamland stuff. Mm. Yeah, it is, and it, yeah, I think I th- we probably would have expected maybe Shane Long to be in there, but the League of Ireland faithful have come out, and even though Shawnee Maguire has moved on, the Cork City supporters have got behind them, and they've got them into that, the Nathan. final. You say that, Nathan, or maybe just people recognise a good moment for what well, it is. There, there is that. They're all good moments. They're all great moments. It's unfortunate that just one of them can be the winner. So, your two finalists, Shawnee Maguire and Kieran Kelly, the Sligo Rovers and Cork City Ultras, primed to cast their votes when the poll goes live tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., all the way through until Saturday. We'll, we'll, we'll announce it on Saturday afternoon with John Duggan. So, Richie, where are you starting? Uh, we'll start in Manchester Manchester United Vice Chair Ed Woodward has told the club's investors he expects the Premier League to resume next month a target date for the second half of June has been discussed but will need UK government approval he was announcing that United's net debt has increased by £127.4 million to £429.1 million in the year leading up to the end of March Woodward says the club's well placed to weather the financial challenges posed by COVID-19 they posted a €3.3 million Euro, a million pound loss I should say for the first three months of the this year alone, while they expect to pay a £20 million rebate to broadcasters due to the lack of action since March. All right, what else you got? 
the 32nd Olympic Games will take place next summer or not at all. That's the view of IOC President Thomas Bach. The Games in Tokyo have been postponed this year but are now due to go ahead on June tw- July 23rd of 2021. Bach told the BBC that they're planning for the Olympics with athletes' health at the forefront of their minds, but plans cannot be forever kicked down the road. Quite frankly, I have some understanding uh, for, for this uh, because you cannot forever uh, employ uh, 3,000 or 5,000 people in an organizing uh, a committee. Mm. Uh, you cannot uh, every year uh, change uh, the uh, entire sports uh, schedule uh, worldwide of uh, all the major uh, federations. Uh, you cannot have uh, the athletes being in uh, uncertainty. You cannot uh, have uh, so much overlapping with the future Olympic uh, Games. So I have uh, some understanding uh, for, for this approach uh, by, uh, by our Japanese uh, partners. That's all fairly straightforward. I think it's, it's mm. easy to say, push it back another year, push it back another three months. But there are huge costs and expenses with nothing coming in eventually they're just going to have to pull the plug. And the idea of running two Olympic Games in 2022 mm. uh, when you combine in the winter ones would just be uh, obscene and an expense that I don't think the IOC could bear really. Um, so they will have to pull the plug if it's looking like, I'd say, uh, this time next year that they're not going to be able to happen. And else to run through? Uh, it's been confirmed that this year's Galway Festival is going to retain its original dates. Events at Bally Brit will get underway on July 27th and end on August 2nd. Uh, each day will have flat races or national hunt races. There'll be no mixed cards. Meanwhile, the Tattersalls Gold Cup has been confirmed for the Curra on July 26th. Robbie Brady, meanwhile, has earned another year at Premier League side Burnley. The 28-year-old Republic of Ireland winger was due to be out of contract this summer, but Burnley have exercised a one-year extension on his day deal. Um, meanwhile, down GEA have confirmed that John Murphy has passed away. The Newry Shamrocks club man scored a goal in their 1968 All-Ireland final win over Kerry. He was also part of Pete McGrath's backroom team for the 1991 and 1994 Sam Maguire victories. Championship players will be given the option to self-test for coronavirus ahead of a planned return to training on Monday. The EFL says it's taking a flexible approach and has outlined three ways in which clubs will be able to check if their players are free from the virus. Teams can also have tests conducted by independent professionals or by their own medical staff. Meanwhile, the EFL board have put forward a draft framework that would see promotion and relegation remain even if the seasons aren't completed. It means Stevenage are now likely to be relegated to the National League despite League 2 being curtailed last week. Final tables would also be set on an unweighted points per game basis and promotion playoffs of no more than four teams will also be played. Shea Given is with us on the football show. He's goalkeeping coach at Derby County. He was back in today. He was saying being tested uh, with the hope that they go back training fully from Monday. So we'll chat to him a little bit about that coming your way from 9 o'clock. Uh, 53106, the Texan. We've got time for one more story, Richie. Yeah, the defending champion and two race favourites are in danger of missing this year's Tour de France, Nathan. Colombia isn't allowing international travel until August 31st because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Last year's yellow jersey winner Egan Bernal, along with Nairo Quintana and Rigoberto Uran, could also be missing when the race begins on August 29th. Colombian riders are now seeking special exemption from their government so that they can ride in this year's Tour. All right, good stuff, Richie. Short and sweet. Thanks for that. Cheers, man. John Giles is up next, picking his all-time England 11. This time, Messing is onside, and it's an identical chip from the young substitute. Brilliant! And Barcelona wrap it up in style in the Camp Nou. Messi. Oh, brilliant skill from Lionel Messi. Surging forward with real menace here. Brilliant from Messi. 